guys. This is going to be a clip from the course that I created on Udemy.com that you can go and watch for free. It is called Foundation Skills for a Successful Meditation Practice. It's a really good overview of some of the skills that you need to practice meditation and it's also going to give you several different 10 minute practices that you can use as much as you like. You can also go and check out the new course that I put up, which is Foundations of Anatomy and Body Science for Yoga Teachers, and that is going to cover the language of movement and the skeletal system. Hey everyone, I'm Laura. Welcome to our class to kickstart your meditation practice. This is going to be a class where we explore six of the major types of meditation and look at the different benefits that each of those techniques has within our life. And then we're going to try to weave that into our daily life because that's always the challenge with meditation. We know that it's good for us. We know that we need to start a regular practice, but actually doing that is always more challenging. So to start out this class, I want to just look at the word meditation and what this actually is. And within that understanding of what meditation is, I think we can start to look at some of the reasons why a lot of people try to start a meditation practice and are not successful in that. So the word meditation or the process of meditation we think of as a practice of training our mind, of training the skills of focus and concentration because a lot of the distress that we experience during the day is our inability to focus. It's not being able to complete a task without getting distracted. It's our mind running away with our thoughts. And a lot of times when it runs away with our thoughts, it can go in a negative direction. So we want to be able to have the ability to notice that process and then redirect so that we're going in the direction that we want to go in rather than where our brain is dragging us. A lot of times in meditation, we use the visualization of the mind as a monkey and the untrained mind is like a wild monkey. It's jumping from branch to branch. It's eating this, it's rustling through the leaves, it's playing with its tail. The monkey is all over the place, not staying on one task for very long. The mind, of course, is very much like that. We know that during the day, when we're having a day when the brain is particularly active and there are a lot of thoughts going around, we can jump from topic to topic. If we are trying to attend to a task, maybe you're at work and you're trying to focus on completing an assignment, the mind going off in different directions can really slow that process down. So you can see just in that the benefit of training the mind, of training our thought process to do what we want it to do rather than behaving like a wild monkey. The other visualization that we use to understand what the untrained mind is like, this one is a little bit more toward the negative end of our thinking patterns we can think of the mind sometimes as being like a wild elephant and you may have seen videos when an elephant gets really mad and it goes on a rampage it can be incredibly destructive it can smash cars it can knock walls off of buildings i mean an elephant on a rampage is a very dangerous and destructive thing the mind when it goes into that spiral of negativity is like a wild elephant it will destroy anything that gets in its path and it is very difficult to control and try to rein that in. So meditation is this tool that we use to train the mind so that we can calm the wild elephant, so that we can focus the monkey mind on one task at a time. That's really the objective here. Um, one of my favorite meditation teachers recently has been Dan Harris, who wrote uh, Meditation for Fidgety Skeptics, which I just love the title of. But he says that meditation is like a superpower. And if you think about the 
benefits of being able to attend to a task, of being able to focus, of being able to fully apply your mind to one thing at a time without getting distracted, it really is a superpower, especially in the world that we live in where there are constant distractions. There are no end to the amount of things that you can get distracted doing. You can think of this like if you are on the internet and you're looking up something and then something comes onto the screen, an advertisement, and you click on that. 20 minutes later, 10 pages or tabs later, you have gone down this whole rabbit hole and you totally forgot what you actually went onto the computer to do. So that kind of shows you the process that we're faced with constantly, especially with media, with computers, with phones, with TVs, we can constantly change channels. We can constantly open a new tab in our web browser. We can constantly open a new app on our phone and have this input that is always changing. So in that, the, the brain, the mind gets really used to constant stimulation and constantly jumping from thing to thing. When it gets bored, it wants to hop on to the next task. But unfortunately, when we're trying to be productive, when we're trying to complete something, that skill does not serve us very well. So the way that we can fight that process, the way that we can train our brain to do what we want, to function the way that we want, is meditation. And I really think that in the future, that being able to concentrate and control the mind really is going to be like a superpower. If you can do that, you are going to have such an edge um, in terms of how productive you are and what you're able to do with your day-to-day -day life, just because you can manage your thoughts and your mind better. So this skill that we're going to work on, there's a lot of tools, there's a lot of techniques that we can use to hone this skill. And I like to think of it a lot like exercise. So if you go to the gym once and then don't go to the gym for two months, the effect of that one visit to the gym probably doesn't have very much carryover two months later. If you're going to the gym three, four, five times a week consistently for that two month period, you're going to see change. You're going to see gains. You're going to see progress. You're going to notice that your body functions differently. Meditation is exactly the same way. The more consistent you are with practicing it, the more you work on your skills, you're going to see a change in the way that the mind works. And that's a documented thing. You can look at all sorts of research and um, see the science behind how meditation restructures the way that our brain works. But I think the most important part is really to experience that in yourself because a lot of times people think, okay, it worked for that person, it worked for that person, but meditation isn't for me. I hear that all the time. But if you have a brain and you have thoughts, then it is definitely worth your time and your effort to train your brain and train your thoughts so that it becomes an asset to you rather than something that is detrimental to you when you're trying to go about your day-to-day -day tasks.